is another bright and sunny day in Lagos, Nigeria, and I have the honor of sitting down with the influencer's influencer. Now, when this man coughs on social media, Nigeria catches a cold, literally. Omojua, JJ Omojua, how are you today? I'm, I'm very, very fine. Thank you for hosting me. It's a pleasure. No, it's great to have you. I know you're a very busy man, but let's get straight into it. Did you aspire to become an influencer, or how did you grow this army on social media? I mean, the truth is I always wanted to be saw with a voice. When I started my blog in 2009, that was, I was, that was part of the intention, to have a voice, to have a name. Um, fortunately, the world conspired and made it happen with the ad advent of the popularity of social media platforms like Twitter. And I think, really and truly, generally speaking, we have started. I know that you're so much more than an influencer. What else do you do? I'm a farmer. Really? I have farms in Lagos and Abuja. <laughs> I am a public speaker. Mm -hmm. I also do trade organizations and HNIs around social media, digital media, and the likes. And I have some other stuff coming up, especially for next year. I do stalk you, confession. And uh, I saw something you posted specifically on Instagram concerning Simi. Now, she is the skeleton athlete, first skeleton athlete from Nigeria. Of course, she traveled to the Pyongyang Olympics with the bobsled team. And this particular headline read, Simi disappoints. Um, and you, you posted it. Tell me what you wrote under that post and where it was coming from. I can't remember exactly what I wrote, but I can remember the spirit of what I wrote. Yeah. So I was on Twitter and I saw this post. I saw the image, see me disappoint. And I thought it was see me the, the artist. <laughs> and I'm, I'm a fan of see yeah, me. Yeah. So I was interested in the story. Then I saw the picture, it was see me Adiabo, the skeleton athlete. And like, what do you mean disappoint? So I read the story and it was because she had finished um, in a position where the, the writer didn't expect for her to finish. See me and the bobsled team were representing Nigeria for the first time. It was, they were, they were making a part with that and they are trail, trailblazers. Mm -hmm. And you have to put it in that context. When, when a country qualifies for a competition for the first time, especially a competition that, that never mm -hmm. paid attention to and its people do not even know exist, say a company qualifies for the FIFA World Cup for the first time or the African Nations Cup or the European Cup or whatever competition for the first time, you put the, company, the country's ranking mm -hmm. in perspective. Yeah. So if that country goes and loses three matches, you don't say disappoints. You give them a hero's welcome. Mm -hmm. Because they've done something that nobody in your entire country has ever done. Mm -hmm. There was no place for disappoints in our story. Well, let's talk about the other school of thought, right? There's a lot of celebration and fanfare happening around the bobsled girls, uh, which you know collectively includes Simi but they haven't won anything. Now, aren't we perpetuating a culture of mediocrity by celebrating people for just attending an event as opposed to encouraging them to go and win and bring back some medals? These girls just came together in September. They did not practice in, in the snow until just weeks before the competition. It's different from when you run or you do triple jump and the conventional stuff that you can find the tools everywhere. The tools for this game, they, they are exclusive. They are not things you just pick up. In fact, they were practicing with a, a, a funny tool before they started to use the real tools. And that's what I'm saying. Look, these, these are heroes. They picked themselves up. They could not compete without a federation. So they had to create a federation, a bobsled skeleton federation of Nigeria. They had to put somebody there as leader, as president. I think it's Solomon Ogban. They had to do, the, so they weren't just playing as athletes. They were also playing as administrators. They did everything they had to do to compete, not just on the field or, or in the snow, but to also compete administratively because they don't just appear in, in South Korea to say, oh, I want to represent Nigeria. They did everything that had to be done. Normally, in the same, in the same world, your business as an athlete is to practice and practice and practice and everything that needs to be done on the other side is not your business. Yeah. Look at the, the fact that people like Ellie could celebrate them, it just tells, it just says everything because they understand that for this country, Nigeria, it's first of all about participation in this particular Olympics, in this particular sport. Guys, it's time for us to have your say. Should we celebrate the Nigerian bobsled and skeleton athlete for qualifying for the first time, no matter what position they came out? Or should we be patient with our celebrations and wait until they bring back a medal? Let's have your say. We know exactly where JJ Omojua stands. From us in Lagos, it's Miss Fumbai. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>